Hey guys, it's SD, your host of the Life Fix Relationship Podcast, where people with all sorts of backgrounds, challenges, and life experience show us how they make their relationship extraordinary. Hey guys, hope you're having an awesome day and enjoying the second to last day of 2020. It has been a year. 2021 is going to be awesome. I know it will if you make it awesome. Anyways, Today we have an incredible couple who've been together for 24 years and they've been through a lot together. The husband, Alton, runs the Deciding Factor podcast. You should go and check it out. It is so cool. The way it works is every episode, they have a question and then everybody on the podcast, Alton and his co-host and the guests discuss the question. They all give their different perspectives and then in the end, they come to what they call the deciding factor and every person decides what is the answer to this question it's really cool go check it out let me know what you think of it but back to our show today we have them on together and they're going to talk about how they made their relationship extraordinary thank you so much alton and heather hill for being here today i am so excited to get this started so do you want to start by telling us how you met and how long you're married for We met in middle school, it's like the summer before seventh grade, and I saw him at an outdoor movie theater in Wimberley, and we, um, I just thought he was a big goofball, and I squirt pickle juice in his eye, (laughs) and he was like, get away, you're annoying, and I was like, oh, he's pretty cute. (laughs) Anyways, so I've been trying, I I tried to get him um, as my boyfriend for quite a time because he was with someone else for a little while um so they broke up because of you not i don't know i don't think so um it was a weird it was a weird deal it was just kind of like the end of their relationship you know i don't know yeah you're a little kid (laughs) yeah um but he knew that i liked him at some point but he kind of was like whatever girls they're fine or not yeah, I wasted a lot of time chasing girls. Like, really, I just wanted to go fish and yeah. do like boy stuff. Girls were expensive, and yeah, wanted to do girly things. Yeah, he just was into doing, you know, all these other things. And, and so you went in that phase of that. Yeah, you went in the phase of like a few months, like yeah, girlfriend, and then no, just like my guys, and then yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was weird, though it was weird because, like, in the beginning, you know, like when you're in seventh grade, who really cares? You know, it's like this <laughs> funny thing. But like, everyone knew that she liked me and that we were supposed to get together. It's like some weird, creepy destiny thing that everybody's <laughs> like, "Why aren't y'all dating?" You know that and like, she likes up. you, and get, he's like, get "Whatever." Out of my business. <laughs> But eventually I caved. It just, it made me want, uh, want to date him more. <laughs> so <laughs> it goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so eventually, uh, we got together. Um, yeah. And everyone was in on it. You know, all the, all the friends and everything. They're all just like, okay, are you going to ask her? And he's like, okay. Uh, it was really weird. Like, <laughs> If I was hearing that from the outside, it'd be like, this How is romantic. <laughs> creepy redneck town that's like funny. And the fact that it's my story, though, it's like, it's real and uh, and awesome, too. So Yeah, yeah. So that's how we met. So how, if you had to compare your relationship now, how long are you married for? We just celebrated 18 years. Yep. Wow. Okay, so if you had to compare yourself now to when you were in seventh grade, how would you say your relationship changed over that time? Oh, well, we were pretty, pretty young and dumb. So we, yeah. (laughs) Did you think, hold on. Did you think you would actually marry each other in seventh grade? No, no. I had a, I had an idea about what I wanted. um, Even at that point, just because of like past history, uh, you know, going through as a a child, having my parents divorce. um, I knew what I didn't want and what I did, whether that turned into marriage, like, I mean, you don't know at seventh and when you're seventh grade, um, but certainly as we uh, grew together and we're just like best friends all throughout that yeah. time. So we didn't really have like pressure on our relationship. Like we gave each other a lot of space because I wasn't that serious because she was hot and I'm like, yeah, it's good to have a hot girlfriend. You know? <laughs> and uh 
And so we just gave each other our space. And I think that that was really helpful. I definitely wasn't thinking about marriage in seventh grade, but at, you know, what, when we're 10th grade, we'd been dating for three years. So through junior high and high school for to date for three years, you have to start thinking, could this be legit? So in 11th grade, this is like a huge thing that happened in our relationship. They were talking about college and what are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, college life, you know, it's like wild. And um, so like, you need to be starting to think about these things. And I thought about our relationship. So we'd been together for four years. And basically one night I just kind of said, hey, what are your college plans? And she's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll go to North Carolina or we're in Texas. Okay. (laughs) And she's like, yeah, I might go do this volleyball thing or this track. Uh, I don't, I'm not real sure. But I'm going to apply at all these places that aren't Texas. Yeah. You know, and I said, Hey, that's totally cool. Follow your dreams. I love you. I want you to have an awesome life. If that's what you're going to do, let's just cut this thing off because I'm done. I don't want to waste my senior year dating you only to have you just leave and go follow your dreams. Like I'm not upset if that's what you want to do. And I certainly don't want to hold you back, but I don't want to date you (laughs) if that's what your plan is. Like this is the time. And it was a, I didn't realize it because like she mentioned, we were young and silly and didn't know anything but she's like crying now and I'm like oh my goodness what did I do (laughs) and um yeah that was like a big moment for us in 11th grade where we had to decide like are we going to try to keep this thing going or are we going to just say hey (laughs) it was good while it lasted Mm -hmm. there how did you feel during that conversation like did you think you would come with you wherever you would go um I hadn't really like thought about it very much. I was just, I thought we would always be together no matter what happened. You know, I, I didn't know, like, I just didn't think it through just not that way, I guess. But you know, he's always bringing up these future goals and plans, which I love about him. Um, Yeah. She's like, I'll come see you on Thanksgiving. And I'm like, Yeah. He's like, this is not going to work. And I'm like, okay, I can see how this wouldn't work for like, I get it, but it, you know, hurt my heart. Right. Because we've been together so long. I was like, oh man, now I got to like figure this out. Like, oh, you know, just all on me at once. Yeah. It was kind of a jerk move, but I didn't know how to say it, but it's like, I needed to make an ultimatum without trying to make an ultimatum. It was really weird, but I knew what I wanted and I didn't want to date a girl who was just getting ready to leave me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think I think that's the way to do it. You have to have these hard conversations and you were smart to have it early. Yeah, for my sure. opinion, it's really hard. Probably if you were to have a conversation now, it would go really different because you had a I lot of hard conversations. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you decide to do? Um, so I decided to apply to school um, close by, very close by, um, which had great program and everything. So, so I decided to stay close and that's what I wanted to do so that we could be together. And so from there, he, not too long after he proposed to me. While you're still in high school? No, it was after, it was like, I was in like a couple semesters into college, right? Yeah. So the way, the way it went down is she went to college and I was like, she's a real catch. By this time I'm trying to, you know, I've got this figured out. And I'm realizing I I have to lock her down because someone is going to if I don't. But I'm like, to be fair to her, like give her at least a semester in college. She can see a lot of boys. If she's going to go find somebody better than this guy. (laughs) You'll go beat him up. (laughs) There's your chance. (laughs) Right. But she didn't know what I was thinking. And so it was, let's see, we graduated high school in May and then she did her first semester. So it was December when I proposed, which totally caught her off guard, um, which is kind of a funny story in and of itself. Cause I had bought the ring several months earlier and everybody knew, but her and all of my jerk friends kept like dropping these hints to her that she didn't know, but I knew cause I had the ring. He's like, be and, quiet. Uh, you know. <laughs> Anyway, so yes. Yeah, so what proposed. would have happened if she would have decided she liked someone else better? <laughs> I would have known. It, look, this is a hard thing to do. But for me, which is better? To, for her to go find someone before we're married and realize that Alton wasn't that great. I just had a limited pool of fish to, to check. 
and then like her run out on me later after we're married, right? So which is better? Before we're married and now we never get married and we never have kids and we never start that and I take the ring back and I don't lose all that money. Um, or yeah, we're married and then she's three years into college and goes, hey, look, we jumped into this too soon. You're really a small fish, right? And uh, to me, that was worse. And so- You're really logical and thought out. Yeah. He is that way. The, yes. That's the thing. He he supports the logic that I don't always have. <laughs> You're the more emotional one. The side of, side of me that I need. <laughs> well, so we both came from divorced families, right? So my parents divorced when I was in- second grade or something like that um she's some, some, maybe a little younger yes i think I mm -hmm. and so we both grew up and i don't know if i want to use the word broken homes but not whole right not two parents that loved each other that have been together for 18 years like i think about our kids what are they they don't even know and i try to explain them like you know that a lot of your friends they just have a mom or they just have a dad and it's weird and they like fight against each other and you don't even know what that's like and so they got really and lucky. glad and we're glad. Yeah, yeah, but they don't know. And so I'm like, anyway, so I guess having that experience and having the, you know, having this experience, right? We're ninth grade, seventh, my last girlfriend was in seventh grade, but we watched a lot of other relationships too, right? So it's not like we're in a vacuum. We yeah. have friends that are going through these things. And um, so we were kind of like the constant in everyone else's relationships. Mm -hmm kind of beat up on everybody else's you know like to see if the other people would actually stick did everyone come to you for advice even in school <laughs> um i probably offered more advice than <laughs> asked that's true I'm like this is not gonna work no i love her and uh, well no, let's I... go do you know one of the things that i believe in is let's go do a stressful experience like hey let's go put on nice clothes and, and go out to a nice restaurant where everything's easy great go do that but you know the questions i like to ask is hey how does this guy handle when he's in stuck in rush hour traffic for an hour you know how does he handle it when the food comes out wrong or hey, man, this girl's never been fishing and you take her fishing. Like that was one of the things that I did with Heather. She'd never been fishing. I'm like, oh, we're going fishing. So I take her fishing. Think her. <laughs> she, she reels in this catfish and I'm like, hey, you got to take, take the hook off. She's like, I'm not touching it. I'm like, well, I'm not touching it. You're going to let it die? And so now <laughs> I've introduced this stressful scenario for her to digest and I can learn more about who she is and how she handles that. Is she just going to be like, you're such a jerk and leave? Or is she going to be like, hey, Hey, here's an opportunity for me to grow and get him to shut his mouth and I'll pick up this stupid fish. And uh, <laughs> Even if I don't like it. I think I've got that picture somewhere of the first time she's like holding this slimy catfish. She's like, ah! <laughs> I love that. Do you suggest to couples who are already married to also do that or only when they're in the dating process? Well, how honest do you want to be with yourself, right? I mean, that's you... I mean, I don't know what everyone says on your, your podcast, but it's like... It's what you say, not what everyone else says. Yeah, but you need to kind of know who you are. And that's a constant development process. Like yeah. the Alton that I am today, like, like you said, certainly not the seventh grade version, but I hope that it wasn't the Alton a year ago. So we're constantly in a state of growth. And I think that um, one of the things that you can do is put yourself in those stressful situations instead of allowing those stressful situations to come to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I like that, like you said, like that fishy example, because it's not stressful, like you're in a hundred thousand dollars of debt or a kid is sick in the hospital. It's stressful for, it's like a fun stress almost, you know, yes. mm -hmm. you created that situation. It's a lot of fun. You pay some, maybe sitting in traffic isn't so much, but it's a small minor thing in comparison to what life is. So you get practice with that for the bigger ones. And it's revealing. Like, I never like to run far distances. And Heather thought that she wanted to run a Tough Mudder. I don't know if you know what a Tough Mudder is, but it's a half marathon with lots of mud, lots of running and obstacles. So rope ladders and like what? Walls. Ice. Ice. Yeah. Ice baths. Ice bath. <laughs> shock therapy. Like you get shocked. So <laughs> she's like, hey, we should do this. And I'm like, did you say half marathon? I'm out. Well, this is what she does. She goes and asks all of my guy friends, you know, my tough guy friends, hey, I'm going to go run this. You want to go? She all signs buddies, up. Yeah. yeah. She signs them all up for this 
Tough Mudder. And then I'm the only one out. And I'm just like, man, talk about peer pressure. I'm like, fine, I'll do it. Anyway, so you want to talk about a stressful scenario, but we, how many have we run? Like three or four now? I think it's been and, uh, four. Like we just crushed this thing. And, uh, and it was a great way for us to utilize, like to decide we're going to interject this like kind of stressful thing and we're going to train and it's going to be kind of crappy. Right. But at the Smart. end, we, we loved it and we've got our headbands now. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was really great for our relationship, I would say. Yeah. Right? I mean, for life. I think everybody should do it. But yeah. yeah, for life and for your relationship. What has it done for your actual relationship? I think that, like for me, it gave me more respect towards Heather in that, like, I've always been pretty fit, <laughs> but like, no joke on this race. Like, we're smoking people in this i mean technically tough mutters are not a race but like heather and i ran the whole thing most people they just get through it but we ran the whole thing so we're smoking past people and you ran together yeah Mm -hmm. wow you know she went through the shock therapy with me like a boss which was the scariest part for me anyway yeah i mean i kind of drug her but like afterwards i had to look at her differently because of how well she did and so it wasn't that there was a lack of respect before probably an annoyance that she made me do it but afterwards for me I was like man this chick's legit you know like ready to take on whatever crap comes and And I know that he can step up and like you know even do things and maybe even try new things and enjoy them when maybe initially he didn't (laughs) want to do those things you know so it's a good way to learn and grow know each other better I think yeah so as your respect goes up even Mar- after married for 18 years, or mis- respect just grows. Oh, yeah, definitely. It doesn't just grow. Ours grows. Like <laughs> It doesn't just happen. <laughs> yeah, that's when we true. were preparing for this, I'm yeah. like, what, what can we bring to the table? And that's one of the things that we were talking about is like, you know, when we tell people 18 years, we got together when we were 13, a common thing to hear is, oh, you're so lucky. Oh, God bless you with your soulmate. Amen. I believe she's from God. I don't know where I'd be without her for sure. But don't for a second, like pretend that we haven't cried and worked our butts off Mm -hmm. for that growth, for that respect. It wasn't like she just got older and then all of a sudden respected me more. You know, it's like Like I matured in some way. (laughs) We got four kids that she's birthing. I'm like, yo, this chick, you know, she's glad it ain't me. (laughs) So how do you get through challenges? Um, Well, we try to, I think, work together and stick together through challenges. Um, I think a big part of that is communication. And I know that everybody says that, right? But um, we need to talk about communication. I know. (laughs) Okay. What do you have to say about communication? Yeah. How do you deal with communication? That was the number one advice that I got when we got together or when I was, when we were engaged, I asked a guy who had been married for 50 some odd years and he was like, dude, you got to communicate. And I'm like, I didn't even know what that meant. When I asked him, I'm like, oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Right on. (laughs) No idea. What that means for us though, is that we regularly audit our, our, uh, our relationship. So since we had such a, what was it? Like five, six, seven years dating. We have a dating anniversary and we have our wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. So they're like six months apart. And so usually on our anniversary, we swallow the hard pill of asking each other, like, what do you think I can do better at? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, if you're not doing that in a relationship, how is it getting better? Right? But if I say, you know, I really wish that you'd take a cooking class or you know, I really wish you'd get in better shape or, Hey, I wish you'd spend more time with the kids. It's like, ouch. Uh, Okay. Well, you identified it. So now I can at least work on it. Yeah. But without that, you're just sitting in like crappiness that never improves. So that's the work that works through the communication. And um, I think that that should be a part of a regular. I like that. It's not just communicating and going to do today, but really like to evaluate our relationship. Now, how it do you sucks. say it? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's hard. And it's it hard. is really hard. That's my next question. How do you say it without it hurting too much? So for sure, like 
<laughs> we're spending our <laughs> we're spending our lives trying to learn how to be more um, gentle with our speech, right? Because um, especially when you're doing these things, you need to be careful with how you say them, um, you know, and be honest about it because. You know, I think some people um, can be like, I'm not very good at doing this. You know, like my uh, speech may not be kind, but like I'm not trying to be, you know, you just have to like talk it out um, honestly. And um, sometimes like we talked about, it's it will hurt. Um, but then you know what like the other person wants. Like how else are you going to know? these things I mean you don't want it to get to a point where someone is yelling these things at you or the response is not going to be um like beneficial yeah which is better the small hurt or the big hurt later Mm. right it's better to have the small hurt and know like man she thinks I'm fat and that I don't have any muscle right she's just asking me to go make my health a priority and to lift weights and when you prepare yourself for that like hey let's have a nice meal we know like we knew we were coming on this podcast it wasn't a surprise you know Let's like set a time to add to our relationship and and have a hard conversation. But you know what? We love each other. And that's why we're having this. And that's why we're Mm -hmm. adding that stress into our lives right now. So that 18 years and then the next 18 years, we're just like even more superstars. Or we can sit here and be lazy about it and just sit. Yeah, we're married, but you know. She sleeps in a separate bed and what's the point, you know? Right. Yeah, I think it's just proof of how much you work on your relationship and for everyone who just says, lucky you. Yeah, it's like- Like (laughs) you had those conversations. I think um, what you're saying is that although the words are hard, the undertone or the reason why you're saying it is coming from a really good place where you want to make your relationship better. So when you understand that it's easier to take it and it's not as hard. I mean, it's still really hard, but it's not like in your face. Right. And like what Heather said too, is that if I say, Heather, what, you know, what's just one thing. I don't need 10. Just give me one thing. You can start with just one thing. That's probably best. (laughs) That I can focus on for the next six months. Yeah. And maybe she's like, I don't know how to say this. And I don't have to be like, tell me now. Right. Mm -hmm. We can just say, look, think about it. Maybe tomorrow, the next day or something, you can think of a gentle way to say it. But what she mentioned was like, now she has to think about, oh, (laughs) I wonder if there's something that I could do better too. And so now there's a little bit of incentive for her to come at me a little more gently. So you say, you know, I love you so much. I want you to be around. I want to be married for a hundred years to you. And I'm like, obviously, She's like, but that can't happen if you're unhealthy. So the fact that, you know, you're at 100% fat percentage. It's not okay. Yeah. You know, how how do you think we could become more healthy? It, maybe it's the gym or whatever, right? So now. Um, we're setting, and we're she, setting goals. And she knows that I get to tell her something too, right? So I think that helps us curb our own delivery yes. as best as we know how. Yeah, 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 I love that. So, okay, so those are challenges that you discuss them once a year. How about those little everyday things that happen constantly? Like, like do you what? fight? Do you argue ever? No, really. How do you do that? <laughs> it's not like we've never argued before in our growing, our growing up. I think in high school we argued. I think mm-hmm. after high school, we have discussed our difference of opinions. Sure. Which to some people that may be the same. Of course, we're not going to agree on everything. Yeah. No, you're your own two people. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've we've accepted that. What I think that I've learned is like, if she has a different perspective, I have to respect that. And like, let's talk about that. And, and he wants to know why. And I should want to know why. Um, you know, he thinks a certain way because as a logical person that I know that he is, he has a reason for thinking that we should do something a certain way or whatever. Um, So I think trying to be open to that is important from both sides. You committed your life to this person. And so I feel like you committed your life. Many people go into marriage, not having that commitment. Well, that's, 
100% true. How yeah. were you able to have that commitment, even though you came from divorced families? Um, I think it may have been because we were from divorced families. <laughs> and uh, at least from my side, I had decided what I didn't want Um, because I saw how that turned out. Um, And there's just a lot of anger, you know, from everybody and just not what I wanted. But like, you know, as a kid, you don't really know what it looks like because of what you see. But you have lots of people like around you that you know, or um, you can find even like find a church family or something that you can go and um, see these relationships where people... um, have awesome ones. They're out there. Um, So it's good to, you know, surround yourself with those types of relationships so that you can kind of like learn something, you know, even if it's a little bit out of time. Um, Or what not to do. You can learn from what not to do. Oh, yeah. And that's where we started. Don't yell at each other. Yelling when people start yeah. yelling at each other and screaming bad names at each other. What do you, what's the next step? Maybe we should not do that. And there's been times I know for both of us, like one of the things that we struggled with early on was Heather would just be mad at me. And I'm sure it was, I did something really dumb, but she thought that I should figure it out. And it's like, look, like he should just know. I am not that you know? smart. Really. I am never. <laughs> no, you look like it. <laughs> like, you've given me a week <laughs> to be mad at me. And I still You're haven't like, figured it I out. Don't know. It's never going to happen. <laughs> So like, that was another tough conversation, right? Like, how do we, you know, because she's mad and I don't know what to do. And I just said, Hey, look, I said, I'm sorry. I don't even know what I did, but until you tell me, I can't fix it. So you either need to act like it's water under the bridge or tell me like, mm-hmm. get over it, you know, cause I can't, you're really hosing me here. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Like, how do that? we fix this? And I'm like, Oh, well, yeah, I guess I should say something. <laughs> so yeah yeah well that's really I guess it takes a lot of self-awareness and just um reflection of realizing okay I don't want this and this is what I do want because most people they know they don't want that and they still get stuck in that pattern of yelling and screaming bad behavior well so and so there's been times where we just kind of let this thing cook and we're both miserable because we both know that we want it to work we both know that we're committed like with our religious beliefs and just the commitment that we made to each other, we were serious and we're like, this is us. And if we don't fix it, then this is our life. And I think that that really makes an impact when you're laying there in bed at night and you're mad or it's not going well and you can't sleep and Hey, that's your life. And it's not like, Oh, I'll just leave. No, it's, this is going to (laughs) suck until we work this out. We work it out. And mm-hmm. it might be worse when we have to work it out. But you know what? Until you kind of air it out gently, then, I mean, what are you expecting is going to happen? Yeah. Now, what was your best a moment in your relationship so far? Ooh, that's a good one. What do you think, babe? <laughs> the best you could have two moments. separate ones, you know? Yeah. Um, hmm. Wow, that's a lot of time. Well, I'll say one of the best times that I had was when we kind of struggled to have kids for a while. We ended up with twins when we were both like 25 or 26. I grew up kind of on the lake, but when we got married, we didn't have a lot. Uh, We were 19 when we got married and we literally moved into a travel trailer. Like that was it. That was our escape. That was our freedom out of our lives <laughs> was, uh, I don't know how I convinced you to do it, but um, <laughs> we moved into ah, a trailer and that was like Amazing. a wedding gift. I mean, it was an old one. It wasn't like a new one. It wasn't that, it was nothing good about it except for that was us Yeah, we were our just freedom. And you lived in together. that thing yeah, yeah, for two and a half years. And then we bought our first house. So 19, 20, tw- like 21, we bought our first house. It was awesome. We had a couple of kids in it twins a few years later and when they were like two or three we got a boat we're out on the lake the sun is setting kind of in our face but it's it's low enough that you don't really need sunglasses it's just gold and the whole all of the water is still and glassy and just gold and it's like this bow rider type of boat so i'm driving and i'm standing up got the tunes just cranking, you know, my perfect playlist. 
and she's sitting in front of me in the bow with the two girls. You know, they're like little short hair and her long hair is just like blowing in the wind. Everything is gold. And in that moment, I was just like so euphoric. I mean, totally sober and just, I thought this is what heaven is like, that the colors were perfect. The sound was perfect. The evening was perfect. And like in that moment, I realized like all of the things that I'd kind of been afraid of and running away from and things that I was running towards were like all bottled up in this like, I don't know, five, five minutes of life where really no words were said, but it was like, that was what we had created, you know, in probably 10 or 10 years since we knew each other and five, six, seven years of, of marriage, we had kind of like created what just popped into my head of like, this is what heaven is like, like sharing this moment with the people that you love. And um, so that may not be like exactly our best moment in the relationship. But for me, that was such a win to be able to have that and work towards that, that um, I'm still, you know, I don't remember anything, but I remember that. <laughs> you like, do you like <laughs> look back and remember that memory? Like I want more of this and this is yeah, what totally. I want in my life. Absolutely. Totally. Honestly. And we talked about this I feel like we peaked a little early, you know, because we worked so hard. Like I was 25. I could have worked a lifetime for that moment and been happy. And now it's like, oh man, well now we have two more kids that we can share that with and, you know, whatever, but. Which is what I was thinking for my best moment. I don't know that I can pick one and even think over all of them in this moment, but uh, recently for my birthday, we went to um, Colorado and we stayed in a, a really cool house in the mountains and we just had a trip with our whole family. You know, the girls got to fly for their first time. And I think just spending time kind of what he's, well, it is what he's saying too, with our, our little family is super cool. You know, that we're all together and just like enjoying ourselves, even though I got like elevation sickness and I was like puking. I was like, this is still like so amazing. <laughs> um, and uh, so just having, I think, times like that where you can share with your family, um, you know, that's really things that you, should, well, at least we want to do more of. Yeah, you have the same value. So even if you're sick, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm it's like, so this awesome. Is totally worth it. <laughs> okay, now what do you wish you knew before you got married? So we did premarital counseling. That was kind of, well, I didn't share the story, but when I, I tried to do it right and ask for Heather's hand in marriage, even though I was 19, her dad said no. <laughs> and he still married her. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told him, I said, well, I was asking for your blessing, sir, not your permission. And uh, anyway, we're all good now. But for her mom, she said, hey, yeah, this is great but I need you to go to premarital counseling. And uh, I thought, I've dated this woman for seven years and you're telling me to go to premarital counseling. What are they going to teach me? I'm 19. I know it all, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the thing that he forced us to talk about was our budget. He said, y'all go home and make a budget. You're going to have your priorities out and she's going to have her priorities and you got to make it work with the money that's coming in. And that was like floored, you know, and we did it. <laughs> And then again, it was like, we were, she's crying. I'm crying. We're all crying. Like, oh my goodness, what are we getting ourselves into? We, you mean we have to do this budget? So it sucked. But then we did that before we got married. Right. So we still had that opportunity to be like, Hey, can we work this together? Are we going to have the same bank account? Um, what is the other things that he told us to do? They were all really good stuff that. Yeah. I it learned. had a lot to do with our families too. Did it? And like, what are you going to do for Thanksgiving? Like, what are you yeah. going to do for Christmas? Yeah. So like, to decide talked, it before you get married. Yeah. Like, have yeah. you talked about these things? Like, or, you know, like he's trying to see, is there going to be this conflict that you have, you know, even in, you know, just the beginning of your marriage that you maybe never you even thought about because you're just like falling head over heels. Oh yeah. Like you're so in love with each other. And I've heard a lot of people like, oh, I'm Christians. We both love God. We've got this, you know, anything's possible with God, 100%. But you know what? There can be, you know, 
Joseph was in prison, you know, because of God, and Daniel was in the lion's den because of God. So just because you can do it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And I think that we learned that there were going to be some things that we had to work through. And the number one thing, well, not the number one, but another thing that he told us was he said, everybody thinks that it's a 50-50 marriage. He goes, that's wrong. It's 100-100. If you're not putting in 100%, it's not going to work. And then he dropped this big bomb on us, which maybe some people may be inclined to uh, scoff at. But he said, I don't know what your beliefs are, but someone has to have the ultimate decision-making power. Mm -hmm. He goes, you can say it's a 49-51. You can say it's a 75-25. 75-25. You can say it's a 90-10, whatever you want to say, but someone has to have that extra little umph for when you can't come to the agreement that one person has the say. So I want to go to my mom's for Thanksgiving. No, I want to go to my mom's for Thanksgiving. We can't agree who's got the final, the final say. And when you give that final say up before your marriage, then what is there to really, you know, talk about, right? It's like, hey, if we get to that place where we can't come to an agreement, then one person gets to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Is that you? Yeah, we decided that that would be me. Mm -hmm. And And do you, Heather, ever feel like that's not fair? No, not at all. Um, I think, you know, in a relationship, it's good to have someone that will, um, take the responsibility to um, make the decisions final. Um, uh, of course, it's not like, uh, you know, I think you have to like be respectful in your decision making communication. Um, you could say discuss it first and then, yeah. Yeah, it's not like he's like, he wants to know what I think. <laughs> I got 51%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that. And it shouldn't be like that. Um, but, but it is a lot of responsibility to take that also. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Do you feel that a lot of, like a lot of responsibility because of it? I have had the opportunity to be in different leadership roles. I feel like I do okay in those leadership roles. You have people who are maybe more inclined to be natural leaders and more, some people are more inclined to be natural followers. I think, with all this feminist activism and and everything's equal and fair to me it's a bunch of baloney like why can't you say what are your strengths what can you do really good and you do that alton what are your strengths what do you do really good why don't we make you responsible for that there's a lot of things that i'm really bad at but there's a lot of things that i can do that i'm good at i can take responsibility and i'm good at making decisions it turns out i even had a podcast about making decisions. Right? An awesome one. <laughs> so at least in this scenario, like yeah. maybe it was good for her to give me that extra 1%, but it's not easy carrying that responsibility. And I think a lot of people think, ah, oh, yeah, it's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. You're right. You're not responsible for all that. You know, my kids are like, dad, why can't we do this? Because I'm responsible. Well, <laughs> I don't like you because, well, I don't care. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Anyway, so I think that some people have it worked up in their mind that I'm not entitled to be the king. Or It's like, man, do you really want to be? Like, if you're Donald Trump right now, do you really want to be Donald Trump right now? Republican, Democrat, Independent? Man, I don't even want to know what his days are like. <laughs> yeah, he's a leader of the, the free country. Not, <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, and ours is a relationship, you know, it's like a puzzle that you're trying to like, figure out and place together nicely, you know, but like with the president's position, you have all of these like different personalities and different people that you're trying to please. Like, I can't imagine what kind of impossible task, (laughs) an impossible task. Yeah. It's hard, but with your, with your significant other, you can, uh, you can do that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, before I ask you the last question, do you have any last piece of relationship advice you'd give to someone who wants to have an extraordinary relationship? I think that for me, if someone wants to have a really good relationship, like they have to either be someone who's really patient or find someone who's really patient. (laughs) But then to believe that so much more is possible. I think that that's like, for me, that's my number one thing that I get annoyed with people is the fact that they settle 
And that really gets me mad because I'm like, you're lazy. You're not willing to put in the work to what could be something that could be so awesome. And you get caught up in arguing and, and, and just not living a really fulfilled life and trying to avoid stress and avoid some pain along the way. And I don't think that that's the path. I think the path is you have to believe that it will be awesome and that you're going to go through some painful times and some awkwardness and some hurt to get to those really good times. And but like to never lose hope that it could be awesome. Like have the passion. Yeah. And the passion rubs off too on those around you. Yeah, that's for sure. I want you to describe for me what is an extraordinary relationship without using these three words. Love, connection, and intimacy. How to describe an awesome relationship? Extraordinary relationship or awesome relationship. Okay. Without saying love, connection, or intimacy. Do you want to go first? No. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'd say that that's a challenging question without those. I'll try not to use euphemisms and sneak those in. (laughs) I would say that you mentioned the love language book for myself. I have certain needs and I know that my partner has certain needs. I believe that it is my goal to make sure that I fulfill all of her needs that she has, whether she knows she has them or not. And that's my responsibility to do that as a partner. I think that that's all of our responsibilities in all relationships. If I'm a boss and I have an employee, still, I need to figure out what are your needs and how do I make sure that those are being met, even if you don't necessarily realize that. And when one person is committed to serving that other person in that capacity of of identifying their needs and working towards filling them up, that that is certainly going to put you on the path to having an extraordinary relationship. Love that. Very well said. He's so good. Especially the part that they don't need. (laughs) I mean, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Part they don't know, I should say. Um, Okay. Pressure's on. (laughs) Pressure's on. So good. Um, To have an extraordinary relationship, uh, I think that it really boils down to, are you committed to one another? It wasn't a word. (laughs) Are you... I got my buzzer ready. (laughs) (laughs) Are you committed to one another to make things awesome do you connect on a regular basis i I said connect Uh, (laughs) do you get together on a regular basis and discuss your relationship how it can get better um the things that you can do you can ask gently the thing you know tell the other what they can do and if you're really wanting your relationship to work like be committed to that and really um try to take action to make those things happen and you can have an amazing relationship that's what we found in ours and we really want other people to do the same yeah Ah, that's why we're here (laughs) yeah that's totally thank you so much what what did you say? I was just saying that's why we wanted to come on the podcast is because we feel like we've been blessed yeah. with a really awesome relationship. And we believe like the odds yeah. were stacked against us in a lot of ways. And yet here we are loving our relationship. And we know that anyone can do that too. Yep. So Yeah, a lot of hard work and it you get it, but it's really worth it. Well, awesome. Thank you so much. It was so great speaking to you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot. Did you enjoy that episode? Could you do me a personal favor and subscribe and leave a review? It would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Thank you.